Hello, all of my lovely subscribers, all 3,500 of you. I cannot believe that in one month, you guys. You guys are literally the best. Um, thank you so much for all of your support. Happy February. If you're new to the channel, this is not a typical read for me. This is a special read that I'm going to be doing because it is February and I am the Southern Strega. And by Southern, I mean I live in Atlanta, Georgia, which is the epicenter of the Civil War as well as the Civil Rights Movement. And here in America on February 1st starts Black History Month. So with that being said, I am going to um, pay homage and honor and respect to Black History today. And I'm going to be pulling some um, cards from a Root Worker deck that I am going to put a link in the description box that I suggest that you pick up if you are into tarot and um, connect to this type of energy. It's the Hoodoo Tarot, if you can see it right here. It comes with this amazing guidebook, guys, and I never read from guidebooks. I'm an intuitive reader. I just interpret from pictures, but this is the only deck that I am going to read from the guidebook because they have done an amazing job um, making this almost like a historical read. A lot of the people on these cards are actual people who lived and have a story and are, are known. I mean, you can Wikipedia some of these people. Like, It's going to be a history lesson as well as a tarot reading today. Um... I am not a root worker. I do not claim to be. I am a channeler. I channel energy and you can feel the energy um, around this type of mysticism very hard down here in Atlanta. There was a lot of pain. There was a lot of suffering. There was also a lot of, you know, coming together as a community and rising from ashes and just a lot of powerful energy down here in the South. Okay. Um, if you're not familiar with hoodoo, it's basically what happened as a byproduct of the transatlantic um, slave ordeal. Um, when Africans were removed from their home, forcibly removed and sold into slavery, they started coming into contact with Europeans and indigenous people in the new colonies in North America. Hoodoo is what happens when all of those different religions kind of sort of mix together. Um, you have probably practiced hoodoo and you don't even know it. If y'all were eating collard greens and cornbread and pork on New Year's Day, then you were engaging in hoodoo. <laughs> all of that originally originated with the slaves and on plantations. And it was all a means of um, their religion, their mysticism, things like that. So to pay respect to that and to, you know, give a nod to that and to educate you guys a little bit on my channel this month, I am going to be using this deck. I'm doing a little different read today. Um, this deck is separated into three separate groups right here. We have the elders. These are all your major arcana card. This is judgment right here. It's called Dem Bones. Like there's different names for everything, guys. And there's, um, it's just a beautiful deck and I can't wait to share it with you. Anyways, I'm gonna pull you some advice from the ancestors. This is like the highest wisdom that you're needing to pay attention to, these major arcana. That's gonna be what's most important going on in your reading. The court cards in this deck, you know, the kings, the queens, the knights, the pages, that's called the family in this deck. So I'm going to pull from the family as well and see what kind of advice um, we can get from them. And then the rest of the cards, the minor arcana, excluding the court cards, are all um, considered the community. So basically, the hierarchy is you should care the most what the elders think, and then your family, and then what everyone else thinks. So they're all important messages, and they're all things that need to be heard, but th there is a hierarchy to them. So I'm going to pull from all three sets of these cards, and I am going to give you the history behind everything, okay? So that is that. If you guys have any questions about any of this or would like to discuss this, I will throw up a post on my community page where we can discuss hoodoo and practices and things like that if you are into talking about stuff like that. Uh, if not, here comes your read for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you've not subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. All right, Capricorn, let's go ahead and pull your cards for you. I'm going to start off by pulling three of the ancestor cards here for you. These are the major arcana. That's going to give you the big picture of the important things that you're going to need to pay attention to, the message that you're wanting to be sent today. I'm going to pull three of them for you guys. Um, let's see. We have the garden. I believe that's the world card. We have railroad bill. It's the chariot. 
And we have Dr. Grant. All righty. Let's see what we got here, Capricorns. Just off general energy from the Major Arcana that I get from you guys, you've got the world, you've got the chariot, and you've got the hermit energy. I just get the energy that a major situation has come to an end quickly, very quickly, and you're now trying to process that. All right, the garden card here, it's just, it's showing this beautiful girl tending to her garden. It says that prior to the industrial revolution, most Americans were farmers by trade. It was hard work, but people took great pride in knowing that the produce that fed and cured their families was grown by their own hands. For people with more resources, gardening eventually became a relaxing, leisurely activity and a way to connect with nature or express themselves creatively. Either way, whether for utilitarian or recreational purposes, the rule for successful harvest doesn't change, which is this, mind your crops. It's an energy of needing to mind your own business, to tend to your own thing. Um, um, whether you have to end this situation or take care of the situation based on necessity or because it's something that you want to take on, I do feel like it's something that has to be dealt with. And I do feel like it is coming in very fast, having to deal with this, with this chariot energy. This is Railroad Bill. Railroad Bill is waving at the people <clears throat> cheering for him in the distance. He was a real person, you guys. They're not sure when he was born. He died in 1896. He was a laborer with no clear past as his name, place of birth, and many other details about his life remain a mystery. What we do know is that the authorities claimed he was a man named Morris Slater, and we know the hell he put them through. It all started in 1894 when Bill was employed as a turpentine worker in Bluff Springs, Florida, when after an altercation, he exchanged gunshots with a deputy. The cause of the row has been lost to time, but it was from that day on that he became an outlaw. Bill committed train robberies and engaged in fatal gunfights with lawmen and bounty hunters who traveled from all over the country to collect the substantial bounty on his head. Bill usually rode alongside the Louisville and Nashville Railroad, the L N line in Southern Alabama. Naturally, the daily reports of him gunning down white men sold a lot of newspapers and it didn't take long before the folk hero akin to Robin Hood was born. According to members of the black community at the time, Bill used his spiritual powers as a conjure man to avoid capture by transforming. He would transform himself into a fox to throw dogs off of his trail. He became the personification of the clever trickster who appears in both indigenous American and African folklore, so much to that his legend has continued to grow well into the 20th century. There's many songs about him, um, by artists such as Riley Puckett, Vera Ward Hall, Gid Tanner, Thomas Dorsey, William Bennett, Jack Elliott, Joan Baez, and others. In 81, he was resurrected and cheered by the working class once again when the musical play Railroad Bill was produced by New York City's Labor Theater. Um, when he shows up, it means you're being encouraged to increase your efforts to ensure victory. Whatever the situation is that you're trying to bring to an end, um, it's telling you that you need to be more confident and more determined, more disciplined, more persistent. Now's the time to take a take no prisoners attitude is what they're saying. Like they're wanting you to go. I feel like this is some kind of a life changing situation for you. It's a big decision, like having a baby or moving homes or changing jobs. It's a very massive, massive transformation and you're having a really, really hard time um, wrapping your head around it with this hermit energy right here from Dr. Grant. Um, Dr. Grant is shown in solitude, picking herbs and roots in the swamps of Louisiana. He was also a real person. He was a Protestant conjure doctor from New Orleans. Unfortunately, the details of his life are unknown. By the time Zora Neale Hurston interviewed Dr. Grant and others in the 30s, um, many conjure doctors were using herbs and other supplies from catalogs. Dr. Grant, however, was a proud swamper who preferred to do things the old fashioned way by gathering what he needed in the wild. Dr. Grant reminded Hurston a few critical but often forgotten lessons. Number one, believe in one's limitless power. Number two, petition spirits unequal to man. Number three, know more than one way to get a job done. And four, acknowledge that no two people or jobs are alike. Because a remedy that works for one person may not work for another. All right, I feel like you're in this position where you wanna make this decision on your own or you don't wanna to have to rely on other people to help you get this done is what I'm getting also. 
you're either in your head about asking for help or you're sketched out about bringing other people in and out. You want, you want to do this on your own is what I'm getting, but it is a massive, massive decision. Okay. And you need time to think about it on your own. It is telling you to listen to your inner voice. Um, it's saying that silence is golden. Focus on finding out the truth. Be in the world, not of it. Pay more attention to your spiritual counselors right now. It's okay to take a break from something. I feel like someone's almost push, trying to push you into making this decision too quickly. It's a very big decision that requires a lot of thought and a lot of carefulness. And somebody is um, pushing you to make it quickly. I mean, it could be something as simple as your mom, you know, pushing you to go to college right when you graduate. Or it could be, you know, your girlfriend pushing you to get engaged or um, just anybody trying to rush you into something that you're not all the way ready for. Because it is a big decision. It's a massive decision that needs to be made. And it needs to be made with thought and care. But you're being... Um, pulled by somebody all right you're looked at as the page of wands yeah you're there's a need for you to be curious here and courageous you might not be wanting you might not be on the same page as somebody i just got you guys are on different pages about this major situation is what i'm getting i don't feel like you're seeing eye to eye about it i don't um this daughter of sticks energy Uh, she's rearing up on a horse in order to change directions. The flock of birds above her forming an arrow indicate that this is the best course of action. It's all about getting pumped up to get the job done and maintaining that high energy until the very end. It's a very passionate, determined, bold, free-spirited, revolutionary type of energy, but it can also come across insecure, um, overly competitive, or like you're putting something off, habitually procrastinating and overthinking it. And I feel like that I feel like you're being pulled to make this decision one way and somebody else is trying to push you to make it a different way. And you know in your gut which way to go. You know, the arrow, the birds, the signs, all the signs are telling you to go in this one direction, but someone's pressuring you to go in a different one. You're being asked to, you know, pay attention to your what you need, your instincts. Don't make this decision based on what somebody else wants you to do because it's a major one. I'm showing that, you know, there's like no coming back from this. It's, like, it's a big one that needs to be made in with careful thought. All right, you had the three of baskets pop up. We just had this pop up for Virgo, I believe it was. It's kind of hard to see. It's some Gullah and Geechee women here. They're weaving baskets out of sweet grass. Sweetgrass is used to open up the throat chakra. This is, you know, I, in the traditional wider way, it would be, it's working together. I, I get, there's a need to talk something out with somebody. There's a conversation that needs to be had. These women are having a conversation down here and you can look at it one or two ways. They're either reminiscing, they're talking about things, they're building, they're collaborating together, they're making these baskets together, or they're gossiping. You know, this is like a club also that they're in. It's a social club. They're either talking, you know, they could be just talking trash and, you know, spreading the latest gossip or anything like that. I do feel a need to have a very serious conversation with the other party regarding this decision and how, yeah, it's become, it's become a burden This pushing you to make a choice. I feel like in your heart, you know which way you need to go, but you're having a hard time saying it because you're afraid you're going to hurt the other person. You got, yeah, you're juggling something. You're juggling a very important decision right now. You are. Um, let me see if the book can give any more guides to these. Just from what I'm seeing off, what you know, what I how I read and the imagery that I read, you're you've been juggling with this decision or with this situation with this person for the longest time, going back and forth about this. And you're ready to just pick a direction and go with it, but you're you're wanting to go in different directions, is what I see. Let me see what it says about the two of coins. It says a juggler rides a unicycle as a huge tidal wave rises in the background. He's drawn a circle of protection around himself in the sand and hopes that all will be well in the end. Yeah, see. You see the circle of protection in the sand. You've already, um, I feel like you already know which way you go. You need to go in this. 
you see the storm brewing in the background, you know if you don't make this decision soon, like somebody's gonna make it for you or it's gonna cause a major disruption if you don't deal with whatever this is. But I feel like you are taking the right steps to protect yourself and your heart. Your ancestors are telling you to just do not let this person rush you or do not try to rush this decision or don't make a rash decision because whatever this is involving is um, a big turning point in your life with this world card. The world is the ending of a, of a massive cycle of a change, a big change. And it's coming up quickly, but someone's also forcing you to do it quickly. And you know you need to make a move before this storm comes. All right, Capricorns, that's what I got for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Click like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff for me so I can keep bringing you these readings. Take care, you guys. Love you so much. Bye.